let's go to a happy place. Okay. I hope it was a happy place. The what? Jim Henson working with Jim Henson was uh, <laughs> maybe not. Was he? Because look, you you get this <laughs> sort of, you know, in in my my perception, and I guess a lot of the people in the world, like like you know, this quiet, reserved uh, genius who. Uh, is humble. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about him other than he created the Muppets and and wow, this is great. But I'm looking at you right now and I'm saying, well, maybe he wasn't the nicest person to work with. Um, you know, it, let me say this about working there. Um, I love Kermit. Okay, Kermit is definitely very special to me. Why is that? Um, I think it's how he copes with being green. I think. I think he really is a coper. He he knows how to just deal with that. Um and he's just very lovable, you know. He really is. He um we we, we communed. It was good. Like it was it. there. Yeah, no, he was good. Um I think there, it's a lot like Beirut. You go and he lets people fight it out. He really puts a group of terrific people together, but they might not all work together well. <laughs> And you have to sort of fight it out. Um, it was something that was the only reason I took it was because I had almost I had lost two other fabulous jobs because I had a skiing accident. I was supposed to be in Hannah and her sisters. I had five scenes. Oh, Part man. was just cut out. And uh, I also was shooting a television thing and uh, it was going to be a two month gig. And I had shot, I think, a day and I was recast because I almost died. But my Jesus. life was saved. I, yeah. And so, you know, I mean, that was a good thing. But yeah. things had been going really well acting wise. And that was the period where, and, and Jim had seen me do Cloud Nine, Tommy Toon's production of Cloud Nine. I was a replacement cast. Um, brilliant play. It was the first, it was how I got my equity card, actually. I did it for, I don't know, quite a few months. And what an amazing, it was the triple role. It was fabulous. And I and he had seen me do that. I didn't know it, but he had seen me do that. And he knew I was teaching at NYU Tisch at the graduate program. He knew I was teaching acting stuff and doing comedy. I was doing clown in the theatrical clown. I taught that for years. And um, movement. And well, yeah, but mainly at that point, it was Theatrical Clown, which was really about finding your own comic persona, your own point of view of the world, and um, just being so present, you know. Um, and anyway, um, I think it was just this this tough time for me. And I went, well, I have to earn some money. And so I said, yes. I had done this other... So I said yes, and then he had me do this other movie sort of to try me out and I loved that process. It was with a director named Gavin Miller and it was called ooh, uh, Dr Dream Child with, Dream Child. with Ian Holm, wow. Cora Brown and um, Coral Brown and Peter Gallagher and Jane Asher. And I was in charge of directing the fantasy sequences for Gavin Miller. So I would direct all of these fantasy sequences with the Mad Hatter and all of this stuff. And, and he liked that. And and well, he, and then he would say, yeah, how about, I like this version. I would do give him like three choices. And he'd say, I like this. And can you do that? You know, and it was great. And I loved the way he directed. It was, it was super fun. Even though it was a, like a condensed period and I had never done any of this before. Again, it was like, you know, you're building it. You're you're creating. Well, it. You're I didn't work with you know the animatronics. It's like you'd have all these buttons, and just to do the Mad Hatter mouth, there were seven people on it on the face. Seven Jeez. people. You had people doing the, the the jaw up and down. Then you had people doing the lips. You had people doing the the eyes, the eyelids. Anyone the, messes up. Doesn't well, work. exactly. And and then you have three or four characters uh, in the same setup. And then you had we had a live British actor who I would have do the voice. I mean, it was complicated. So anyway, I ended up doing it. It was a year of my life. And then I was, Frank Oz said, do you want to do Little Shop of Horrors and do the plant? And I went, no, I think I want to go back and do acting. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I loved Frank. I loved Frank. But I, I just, it wasn't my genre. What can I say? Did, I, did you have him do the Yoda voice? No, I didn't. No. I would have done it. Frank, <laughs> you would have. Just can you ask me in your Yoda voice and I'll consider it. Mm, join me. <laughs> Little shop of horror. I'm sorry, that's terrible.